Hey, now that Monster Examine is available in the raid, pretty much all the numbers have been crunched, and I'll quickly show you all the best gear you can use at every price point to conquer the tombs of a mascot. This is my second attempt making this video, I had already finished and uploaded this before and the video was doing great, but there were a few mistakes in my calculations, so for integrity's sake I'm just making the entire video from scratch again. This time I called in the backup of PVM and math expert Bartlett RS. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to also check out his channel, he's about to drop some great Tombs of a Mascot videos and other boss guides soon. Before I'm about to show you the gear progression step by step, I want to quickly go over which weapons will work best at which boss. For Zebak, the Twisted Bow will always be best in slot, no matter what, because of Zebak's high magic offense bonuses. If you don't have a T-Bow, the Bofa will be your next best option, but a Toxic Blowpipe with Dragon Darts comes darn close. If you bring the BGS however, and manage to get some good specs in, the Blowpipe will actually outperform the Bofa. If you can't afford a Bofa and you miss your BGS specs, you'll still be better off using a Dragon Crossbow. The best special attack weapons to use here are the Claws, when you are using T-Bow, Bofa or Dragon Crossbow, and a BGS if you want to use the Blowpipe here. For Kefri, it's pretty simple. The Karis Partisan will be best in slot for a long time, especially when you slap on the blue crystal, the Breach of the Scarab, which adds a massive accuracy boost when fighting her. When you get to high invocation levels, at around 300 points, the Osmumpton's Fang will start to out-DPS the Karis because of the defense scaling and the crazy accuracy of the Fang. The best special attack weapon to use here is the Dragon Claws. You ideally want to use it to spec out some of the large Scarabs. For Baba, the Osmumpton's Fang is best in slot all the way at any invocation level. At very low invocation levels, the Scythe will also be pretty good here, but this quickly falls off in favor of the Rapier or the Zami Hasta, so I see little point in bringing a Scythe into the raid with you. A Bofa with full crystal armor setup is also definitely usable at Baba, though it's a bit worse than the Zami Hasta. It could be useful for when you want to be extra safe against the Mind the Gap invocation, or if you want to be lazy and you don't want to switch gear for his rolling boulder phase. For special attack, use the D Claws here as the BGS spec doesn't lower his defense. For Akka, we'll of course need to consider all three attack styles. When you need to melee him, generally the Fang is best in slot, followed by the Rapier, then the Scythe and then the Zami Hasta. When you need to range him, the Blowpipe is best in slot pretty much all the way. And when you need to mage him, the Shadow of Tumacon is absolutely massive here, but you likely can't afford that, so just stick to your Sanguinestes and Tridents for now. For special attacks, the D Claws are great here once again, so you can DPS him down in his final phase. And for the final fight, against the Obelisk, you generally have three good options. Tumacon's Shadow will probably be the best, followed by BGS specking the Obelisk and killing it with a blowpipe followed by declawing the obelisk and using the Osmumpton's Fang to finish it off. Just chilling with a Bofa will also work pretty well against the obelisk. For phase 2 of the Warden fight, when you need to mage them, the Shadow of Tumacon is best in slot, then the Sanguinesti stuff and then the Toxic Trident of course. When you need to range him, Tebow is best in slot, with a big gap to the Bofa which is second best in slot. If you're not bringing T-Bows and Bofas, a Blowpipe with Dragon Darts is gonna be your best option up until around 220 invocation level. After 220 points, the increased accuracy from the Dragon Crossbow starts to outperform the Blowpipe. Use Dragon Dagger special attacks during Phase 2 to make quick work of the core. For Phase 3 of the Warden fight, the T-Bow will again be best in slot. However, because of his low defensive stats, the Blowpipe will also work wonders here, especially if you manage to land a BGS spec on him. For the final Madness phase of the fight, however, he will regenerate his defensive stats and becomes a lot tankier generally. T-Bow will again be best in slot, goddammit, followed by the Bofa and the Dragon Crossbow. You really, really, really don't want to use a blowpipe here. He has very high defense, so the inaccuracy of the blowpipe will be noticeable, and you won't even be able to attack every possible tick because you're spending so much time dodging the crap on the floor. If I have some special attack energy and perhaps an adrenaline potion left at this stage, I usually try to get some D Claw specs in here to burst him down. Okay, now that we went over the best weapons for each of the bosses, let's have a look at the order of importance for upgrading. The starting point is gonna be a 100 mil budget setup. You can of course do normal modes with a lot less gear, going as low as just using free to play gear, but that's hardly going to be an efficient way to go about things. 
But before we check out the gear progression, make sure you don't forget to subscribe to the channel and leave a comment for the almighty algorithm. Starting off with the weapons. You'll want to bring the Karis Partisan for Kefri, a blowpipe for Akka, Kefri Swarms, Baba's Rolling Boulders, and perhaps the third phase of the Warden fight, and even Zabak depending on your gear. You also should, in addition to the blowpipe, bring a Dragon Crossbow with Ruby Dragon Bolts for Zabak and the final phase of the Warden fight. Bring a Zami Hasta for killing Baba and Akka, bring a Toxic Trident for Akka and Phase 2 Wardens, and a Banos Godsword to potentially spec Zabak and the Obelisk. Also sneak in a DDS to kill the core at P2 Wardens. For the armor, the most convenient helmet to bring is a Serp Helm, so you don't have to mess around with Sandfuse and Antivenoms. You could also consider swapping this out for something like a Helm of Nate is not, just make sure you don't forget some Sandfuse serums then. For the magic setup, bring some Arams with an imbued God Cape, for ranged, bring some blessed dragonhide armor and your assembler. And for melee, bring some strength boosting gear like torso, obsidian legs, a fire cape and a dragon defender. Note that these are already quite a few switches, so if you're just starting out, you might feel more comfortable camping the Aramis bottoms for example. You also of course want to bring the massive jewelry upgrades, get yourself an occult necklace, the necklace of anguish, and for melee, you can choose between a blood fury or a torture. I personally prefer the Blood Fury because of the super satisfying massive heals at Kefri when the Kefrin part is in special effect procs. I usually just cam the Barrow's Gloves because they are pretty good for all attack styles and it makes for easier switches, but the Tormented Bracelet would be a great upgrade to your mage setup. I'd recommend using a Brimstone Ring as it is pretty good for all attack styles and cam some Dragon Boots as boot switches are really not worth it. Don't forget to get yourself a Dragon Pickaxe to speed up Akka's puzzle room. If you really want to do raids on a smaller budget than this, change the Hasta to an Abyssal Dagger, ditch the BGS and replace the Amulet switches with a Fury and you'll still be doing fine. When choosing the next big upgrade here, it's a bit of a toss-up, depending on what you like best and what boss is giving you the most trouble. The choices are between the Dragon Claws with a Lightbearer Ring, the Bofa with a Crystal Armor or a Rapier. Personally, I'm just a massive fan of using the Claws, so I'd make that upgrade first. This will require a budget of around 260 mil, as you'll also want to get the Light Bearer Ring to go with it, so you can use the special attack even more often during the raid. The Claws are super useful for Baba, Kefri and Akka, so they're gonna save you a ton of time. I also love using them at the final Madness phase of the Warden, as it is for me the place where I still plank the most and shortening that phase with the Claw Specs saves me a ton of supplies. With a budget of around 550 mil, you'll want to ditch the Dragon Hides and the Dragon Crossbow in favor of a set of Crystal Armor with the Bofa. I personally have no problems with taking a bit longer to kill Baba and Akka, so I'd prioritize the Bofa over the Rapier, which should help out quite a bit with Zabak and Phase 2 and 4 of the Warden fight. If you don't have the whopping 300 mil it currently costs to get the Bofa set up, get your Rapier in the meantime. If you have a budget of around 700 mil, you can finally throw away your Zami Hasta and replace it with a Rapier. It'll be a while before you can move on to the next upgrade, so get yourself some Bandos gear and some Prims while you're saving up. Once you're at around the 900 mil mark, you can sell the Rapier and your Bandos back and finally upgrade to the Fang, which is just absolutely bonkers at Baba. It's also great for destroying the Obelisk, killing Akka when he's weak to melee, and even at Kefri at higher invocation levels, so definitely a solid upgrade. Once you've made some more money, get your Bandos and Prims back to get some more damage with the Fang and the Dragon Claws. Okay, we're getting very close to the 1 bill mark already, but let's carry on for the rich people watching this video. <clears throat> Get yourself a Sanguine Esti Staff for another 100 mil and the Illidanis Ward if you're comfortable with bringing in an extra shield switch. Just make sure you've upgraded it into the fortified version by combining an Arcane Sigil with it or it's absolutely not worth bringing. By the way, to combine the Ward with the Arcane Sigil, you'll need to have 90 Prayer and 90 Smithing. After that, I'd recommend ditching the old Barrow's Gloves in favor for the perfect trifecta of the Tormented Bracelet, the Ferocious Gloves and the Zerite Vambraces, if you're comfortable with bringing in those extra glove switches of course. At around a total value of 1.6 bill, you'll be able to get yourself a set of Ancestral Robes to give you some more max hits with magic, but at this point we're getting into the realm of absolute best in slot, and the first massive upgrade you want to focus on is getting yourself a Twisted Bow. It'll be worth it to sell a lot of your gear to buy this. 
You can sell the Bofa, your Bandos, your Elodinus Ward, the Glove Switches and probably even more stuff just to be able to afford a Tebow and it will most likely be worth it. So even though the counter on the top right says 2.5 bill, you should be able to get yourself a pretty good setup with the Tebow starting at around 1.8 bill and start buying back the items you sold pretty much in the order that we went through before, skipping over the Bofa of course. The Tebow is absolutely nuts, best in slot for Zebuck and the Wardens by a long shot at all invocation points, it's just gonna save you so much time. Now for the final few upgrades, for those just swimming in cash, upgrade to the Armadil or the Mazori armor, and after that you'll wanna upgrade your Banos armor to Torva until you can afford a Shadow of Tumukun. The Shadow will be your second giant purchase, coming in at a cost of 1.8 bill as of recording this video. This is gonna be awesome for killing Akka, the Obelisk and P2 Warden, so again, it'd be worth it to sell your Torva and some other gear for now if you get close to being able to afford it and buy those back later. Do note that this is not as big of an upgrade as the Twisted Bow, so definitely not worth selling nearly everything over. And that's basically the end of the gear progression. You could of course go even further, bringing multiple boot switches, helm switches, a third age pickaxe and so on, but let's be realistic, who's gonna bring 10 way switches into the raid? If you know this is you, I'm sure you can figure out the right helms and rings to buy. One more thing I wanted to mention before letting you go, if you're still using barrages, stop what you're doing and get yourself some trolls. Sure, the barrage is nice for some health gain against a crap ton of minions, the shaman in Baba's room spawns, but the trolls are great literally at every other place, so yeah. If you're doing raids 3 in a team, maybe just have one person bring barrages and clump up the monkeys. Just make sure that if you're using thralls, you don't have one summoned when Akka goes into his white blobs final phase, because the thrall attacking will make him teleport around faster. And that's basically it. I hope I gave you enough information so that you can piece together a great setup for yourself. You might want to switch out some of the recommendations here and there to give you fewer switches or get some better gear for the boss you're specifically having trouble with, but this video should give you a good idea on what to focus on first. If you got something out of the video, consider subscribing to the channel, I'll be posting more Tombs of a Mascot and bossing content soon. If you still need a guide on how to complete the tombs, I'll have a video for you on screen now, go check it out. Thanks for watching, see ya!